If you guys have been on the channel recently, you have seen us play with a lot of core memory. We looked at little ferrites dangling off their thin wires. We made core flipping experiments on an eBay source core plane. We showed you our old IBM 1401 4 kilobyte stack and looked at several from the Apollo AGC. Mike even picked one right off the museum display for close inspection. And then we eventually checked the bones of our broken AGC module with an X-ray machine. But we can never have enough fun with nicely over-engineered old things. So today Ken brought us another fine example of core memory to look at. Ken, what have you brought? So, so this is a, a core memory module from an FAA 9020 air traffic control system, which was a room fulling multiprocessor, multiple 360s hooked up to memory modules to run air traffic for regions of the United States. So what we have here is one part of the, the memory system. Um, e each core plane has 33K of bits, uh, 32K plus a bit extra for um, registers and stuff. Um, that was called the bump. Um, we, we're not sure if there's nine or 18 planes for one byte or two bytes plus parity wide. Wait, I, I took an x-ray, it's 18 planes. Um, at the top you can see the sense wires. Um, the yellow wires on the side are the XY driver wires. Um, there used to be a bunch of cards plugged in here full of transistors that were driving the X and Y planes. I took those out to make it more visible here. And here's the whole memory module with all its card assembled. With the fan at the base. And the date on this? Um, well, the manufacturing date is 1971. 1971. So, so the, the air traffic control system, they started at the late 60s and then around 1970s when it came into service. It had 512 kilobyte units. Um, these units were 17 feet long. These were massive storage modules um, that have a bunch of these hooked up. I, I believe that they um, took four of these modules together to make a block, then they'd put four of those blocks into one of these 17-foot cabinets, and then they'd have, say, 10 of these cabinets at their air traffic control center. And in the end, they would have, what, a megabyte of memory? Or? Um, so e each of the 17-foot cabinets would have 512 kilobytes. So, yeah, the air traffic so. control system was based on multiple 360-50s and 360-65s hooked together. Um, reading data from radar and then driving a bunch of the you know air traffic controller control screens where they could track the planes. Um, so they could, if um, the system was designed to be fault tolerant, so that if a computer failed or a memory module failed, you wouldn't lose your air traffic control system. It would just switch over to use a different memory, um, different processor. So it was designed for high availability and reliability. So this yeah. is a picture of one of the air traffic control computer centers. You've got the main control console here, you've got the 360-50s here, you've got the 65s here, a bunch of tape drives. And these would be very similar tape drives to these, which are now sitting in my garage. And then this would be connected to a second room that looked fairly similar that would um, then drive all the radar systems and the panels. Also, and the panel. they actually had three, uh, 360-50s in it, not only 65s. They started yeah. out with just 65s and then they added the, the, 50s. the 50s were for the I.O. and oh. the 65s were for the computer. It's like okay. 1401 uh, <laughs> offload. And the 360-50 is what we have over there. That's the panel that's in the background of our, some of the videos. We haven't quite gotten to it, but it would be hooked up to a machine like this. And, and where, where are the me memory uh, um, I cabinets think, I think there? I th probably these big ones in the back. Oh, all tucked in the, in the really back of it. Yeah, they used to extend off the back of them, which is weird. But you don't see them going on. Oh, they have a 1403 printer. Uh, I'm sure you guys remember the 1403 printer. How can you forget? Yep, oh, yeah. the front. And, the, and the card reader here. Right. And the reader would be a close relative of this one. This is the reader for our IBM 1401 from 1959. Still used in new government installations in the 1970s, apparently. 
That lasted forever. They are still struggling trying to update it. They tried to update it, and the after spending a few billion, they stopped. Right, well, or something it's, it's like that. It's a hard that. problem. Well, that was the memory that was used uh, for a long time to get our to get your airplane traffic around. Amazing. And the Iran do things forever, not wanting to break something mission critical that worked. The last ones of this great dinosaurs were torn down in the early 2000s and were unfortunately chopped into little bits. Here's one just before recycling. And that's what happens afterwards. And by the way, guys, we got our uh, 360 50 working. Uh, we hook it up to the core memory you just saw. And you just kidding. We we have Ken here and he brought a bunch of NeoPixels. Yeah, so that <laughs> that works wonders. <laughs> right, so it's almost fixed, right? We're, yeah, we're, we're just about done. We're almost there, all right.